Hello, we're on to, uh, to chapter 11 here, so with that, and so we're going to be talking about um, doing more reactions with, with alkenes and alkynes, um, so with that, and so a, a lot of what these things are, production of three membrane, so cyclopropanes and, and epoxides, a lot of these are going to work through this sort of crazy reaction, uh, this crazy mechanism where you have a, a lone pair on your electrophile, um, so with that, and so this, and so you get the simultaneous, we're going to make use these electrons to to make this bond here okay and then we're going to use these electrons here are going to get attracted because it this um, this group here is actually going to be lacking its octet um, and stuff like that and so that so this double bond becomes this new bond here um, stuff like that and so you get the simultaneous attack of, of here and here um, to make this three rimmed ring um, stuff like that and so um, and so one of the sort of things that ha you know, one of the consequences of that, because it's it's concerted, so it happens at the same time, is that these groups, okay, are going to be on the same side, okay. So these groups here, okay, um, stuff like that. So since they're on the same side of the uh, of the alkene, they're going to remain here. So so they're going to be either both, um, so with that. So they're either going to be both wedges or both dashes, okay. So with that, and so these guys here right so with that will be here okay so so these if these are both wedges these will both be dashes and vice versa um, so like that so you don't get free rotation it adds right to right to one side okay so with that cyclopropanes um, have gotten some um, more popular in medicinal chemistry lately um, so like that and so these are um, some of the molecules right so with that and so you have a cyclopropane here for singular for, for asthma you've got one here this is an anti-HIV drug, um, a uh, was it atropa, stuff like that. And so um, here, this is one suboxone, which is used to treat opioid addiction, right? So it's got the cyclopropane there. Um, effiant, which is a platelet aggregate inhibitor, so, so it stops you from um, blood clots, um, stuff like that. So um, it's here, right, stuff like that. So on Gliza, this is anti-diabetic. -di There's one right there. Um, and here another anti-HIV, right? So it's an um, EBSICOM, stuff like that. And so these are just some of them um, that, that have that in there, stuff like that. And so the, one of the ways that you can do this is, is forming what's called a carbene, okay? Stuff like that. And so the here, the carbon does have a lone pair, right? But it doesn't have its octet filled, right? It only has six valence electrons, okay? Right, two here, two here, two here. Right, so so it's deficient. Um, so like that, it is highly reactive. Right, so like that, and so you have to generate it during the reaction. So it's called in situ, and so like that. And so one of the ways that you can do that is is through what's called diazomethane. Okay, um, so like that. So that'll that'll add directly to an alkene to make the the cyclopropane ring. And the way that you do that is that this is a um, you hit this with light or heat. Okay, so like that, so that's going to break this bond. Okay, so these electrons here, and the thing is, you make nitrogen gas, and it, it, you release that bubbles away. Okay, so even this is slow, it's not. But if even if this was slow, this is going to help drag that reaction. This is incredibly stable. Okay, but what ends up happening is right, you you make this carbene, and you get um, simultaneous this attacks here, this attacks down here to make the the. Um, the uh, um, the cyclopropane. So this CH two here is that CH two there. Okay. So that it's another way that you can do this. Okay. This is a little bit cheaper. So one of the problems with with diazomethane, okay, is the fact that it can do this <laughs> very spontaneously. Uh, it doesn't take much. Um, in, in that you get a rapid onset of of nitrogen gas to make something incredibly reactive. And so this is um, a contact explosive. Um, stuff like that, and so um, it's like you can't have, you don't want to have like ground glass joints when you're using diazomethane because if it, um, if it, if it gets in there, it gets ground, then um, it'll actually explode. Um, stuff like that. So if you want to make a, a chemical engineer stay uh, pretty bad, you can tell them that you're running a reaction with. Uh, you need to run the reaction with diazomethane. Um, so that they give them heartburn. 
so with that. But another way that you can do it um, is actually with um, with just chloroform uh, in the presence of base. Okay, so this is actually one of the reasons why chlor we don't use chloroform that much with the uh, with organic synthesis. If we do, we usually do dichloromethane, which has one fewer um, hydrogen or one fewer chlorines in there, so CH2, Cl2, um, stuff like that, because this um, this hydrogen is acidic. Okay, and so the way that this works is that the uh, the hydrogen it's gonna so it's just a base reaction and so you end up with this um, intermediate here okay All right so these electrons that were here becomes this lone pair okay so like that so you make water right HOH now the crazy thing happens is that this goes away okay one of the chlorines goes away and so you end up with the carbene okay and it takes this chlorine when it goes away it takes the the uh, um, the electrons with it, and so now this is what you got, stuff like that, plus Cl minus. Okay, now you can do the the carbene reaction with the uh, um, with the double bond to make your cy your cyclopropane here. Okay, now the only problem is right. So instead of hydrogens here, you have chlorines. Okay, which which can be good, um, good or bad, depending on which way you want to do this. It also works with bromoform, right? So the bromine version of this, and so it would end up being um, you just have bromines here. Something like that. So, but again, this is why you um, chloroform. You can't run them in base because you can make these carbenes, which might, re you know, might be reactive with your molecule. So, switching to dichloromethane, that you don't have that problem. Okay. Another way that you can do this is what's called the Simmons-Smith reaction, and it what ends up happening is the zinc actually inserts itself within here, but effectively, you're making. Um, a carbene, okay, so this is going to be a, a lot less energetic than the diazomethane, but it's doing the exact same thing. This CH2, you end up generating um, equivalent of this, okay, which, which then can come in to fit that. So this CH2 here, right, is this CH2 here, and you end up losing the iodines, okay, um, so like that. But here you can make a cyclopropane that doesn't have the, the chlorines in it, it just has the regular hydrogens. Okay, so diazomethane and the Simmons Smith, they're analogous reactions. If you want them with the chlorines on there, you do it with the uh, the chloroform and base. Um, so like that. So so here you go, right? So with that, so ah, CHBr3, right? So this is a um, a bromoform reaction, okay? And so what you're going to end up doing is you're going to make the uh, the triangle here, right? On this on here, right? But notice how right these hydrogens are pointing this. So so these guys are going to need to point the same way. So this is CH3. Right. And these guys are going to need to point the same way, okay. and so you're going to make the the triangle here, right? So with that, so this CH2, oh excuse me, this is this has bromines on it, right? And CBr2 that you're going to make is there, okay? Now this this propyl group, right? Let's say that this is a this is on a wedge, right? So dot dot dot, right? So that means this hydrogen is also on a wedge, okay? Now this methyl group that means it's on a dash, and that this is on a dash. That hydrogen is on a dash. Now you could say, well, th you could have these on wedges if that happens, and these would be on dashes. As long as you're consistent, that that doesn't matter. Okay, so you end up with that. Um, so that the other way you can do it, right? Again, you're going to make the triangle where the uh, um, in the presence of the um, or where the alkene is, right? But here you're under Simmons-Smith um, conditions, and so you're just going to end up with the CH2 there. And so, I'm just going to end up with this. And there's no, um, because there's just hydrogens here, there's no stereochemistry, so it ends up just being this one product. Okay. Now, for here, right, so for that, so, so for, you can also add bromine across here. So for that, you could, this also works with chlorine as well. Um, so for that, and so with bromine, it's going to actually be the, the similar mechanism of just adding HBr. So, so here it's BrBr. Okay. Again, you're going to add this. It's going to kick away, right? To make your right. So that so the bromine is going to go to one side, the carbocation is on the other, right? And the bromine is going to attack. Okay. But the way that you end up doing this is, is you end up doing anti. So one is going to be up and the other is going to be down. So one wedge, one one wedge, one dash. Okay. And and you're going to get both an antimers. But it's essentially the same reaction as adding H HBr. It's just BrBr. Okay. And so the way, so they show it as as concerted, right? So it goes through this um, bromonium ion. So for that, I usually like to show it, um, right, as more stepwise, right? So with that, so BrBr, 
but it gets to, it gets to you to the same place. Um, acting here, push that up. All right, so with that, so you end up with this. But the important part is that you have a positive charge. You have the bromine. Okay, if you have something that's positive, charge, you have lone pairs right next to it, and so you can get this nice resonance structure where you have. Um, So the here and here with the positive charge. And so by that, and so this is called a, what's called a bromonium ion. Okay, the bromonium ion. And this does two things. One, it helps stabilize that positive charge. Okay, it stabilizes this. It also blocks the top. So if you're adding it from the top, it blocks this phase. Okay, and so the only way that the bromine um, the bromine can attack is from the bottom. Okay, and so by that, and so if the, the top uh, top is blocked by the bromonium. The, the the bromide that comes in and attacks has to attack from the bottom. So one up, one down. Okay. So you get what's called anti-addition. So with that, so um, so with that. So it works the same way with chlorine, right? So with that, so um, again, you're going to get one up, one down. So with that, so fluorine would work, um, except it's explosive in the presence of, uh, all right, like F2 would be explosive in the presence of alkene. Uh, I2 does work, but you have to add, I think you have to add some acid to it, stuff like that. So um, usually this works with bromine and chlorine. That's sort of a regular mechanism we, we deal with. So, but again, it's, it's going to work the exact same way, okay? Now with, um, so with that, with, al with alkynes, right, it's going to, again, it's just going to act like two alkenes, okay? Now, you are going to get a mixture of cis and trans. Usually, it's going to be trans, but you can get some cis, stuff like that. So if you have one equivalent, you're just going to put one, BRs on both sides, okay? If you have an excess, you're going to put, uh, the reaction is just going to happen twice, right? So with that, so more bromine is going to come in here, going to add it here and here. Um, so like that. So the reason why you you get um, you don't get quite the selectivity there is because you can't really go through the bromonium. It's going to be really difficult to to move these um, these bonds so far out of how they want to be. Um, so like that. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of ring strain. So this probably doesn't form. So like that. So okay. Now that was just with bromine. If instead you you run this in say a wet solvent or you just dump in water. Okay, so what ends up happening is instead of the Br minus coming in and attacking, it's actually the water that comes in and attacks. There's going to be a lot more water around than Br minus, so that's going to do the attack. Okay, but it, otherwise it's going to work exactly the same. That last step is just a little different because now the water is coming in. But again, you're going to get the anti-addition, one up, one down. Okay, so with that, so again, you're going to have this, and so instead of the Br Br minus coming in, it's going to this one's going to come in from the back side, and you're going to end up here. Um, Right, you're going to end up ripping off the hydrogen. You're going to H make HBr, but otherwise it's exactly the same. Nice little anti-addition. Now, um, so if you want to do these, right? So these are called halohydrins, right? So for the high, like hydrogen for hydrate, right? So we're adding water across it, and halo, right? For halogens. Okay. Now for asymmetric alkenes, you're going to follow basically what's going to um, ends up being Markovnikov's rules. Okay, because you want to make the more stable carbocation. Here, right? So by that, so this is secondary, right? So this is primary. So we're going to want to put that carbocation here, okay? That and that—that's what ends up um, at the water ends up adding to, okay? Um, so by that, and so you want to put the OH on the higher numbered side, okay? So for that, so, so this goes on the higher number, numbered side, okay? So, so here we go, right? So with that, so we have BR, BR, BR. Right, so with that, and so that's going to attack here, right? So with that, so there. Right, so you put the first bromine on there, right? So with that positive charge, right? So with that, so, and then, and then that's going to attack there, right? So with that, so, right? You could get the bromonium, right? If you needed to. Usually good usually a good idea to put that in, right? So with that in your mechanism, okay? So that's going to attack there, and so you're going to end up with a bromine here and a bromine here, okay? And there, it's going to be an anti-addition, okay? 
Now for here, we're going to do the exact same molecule, right? So with that, so we're going to end up going through, right? So again, we're going to get this attack here, push that away, right? So with that, so we're going to have the bromine here, carbocation there. Again, we're going to have the um, the resonant structure. For your bromonium ion, okay. So with that, but now what's going to happen is the lone pairs on the uh, on the water are going to attack, right? Br minus. Like this, okay. So with that, we still have the hydrogen, and the, the bromine can come in here, and or the or another water or something like that can come in and grab that um, to make your halohydrin. OH, Br, this like this, and again, it's anti-addition. Okay, so with that, so so but again, the OH is going to go on the higher numbered side, right? So with that, so this is this is tertiary. This is secondary, right? So with that, so here it doesn't matter, right? So with that, so because you're going to add Br across here, but here it does. Okay, so one of the things that you can do with this is you can actually make an epoxide, okay? Because what's going to happen is you have this H, right? So that can come in and act like a base, end up going here, and you can get this intermediate. Right? And so now you can you're perfectly aligned um, to do to do a backside attack here, push that away. All right, so with that, so to make that, okay. So this would be um, this would be up. Right? Well, actually, it's, there's no stereo chemistry because um, it's meso. Um, so with that, so Br minus. So with that, so this can be perfectly aligned. So you can you can make these halohydrins, put in a little bit of base, um, and then that collapses down. To make your epoxide, so, like that. so that's one way that you can do it. The other way that you can do it is using what's called MCPBI. It's really any sort of peroxy acid. Um, a popular one is MCPBA, meta metachloro uh, per, um, per benzoic acid, stuff like that. And so notice that it's not just not a regular carboxylic acid where it's OH. It's, it's actually O O H. Okay, and that has some profound effects to it. But what this really does is it, it is it takes an alkene and it puts an epoxide where that alkene is. We're gonna put that there. Okay, works pretty well. And stuff like that. And so again, we're gonna be having uh, the same thing with like the cyclopropanes, right? So these guys are gonna be right. So these need to be you know either both wedges or both dashes, and these will be the opposite. Okay, so like that. And so. Um, Right, so with that, so that means we have a wedge hydrogen here and a dash hydrogen here. Right, so with that, so these guys are going forward, right, and these are on these guys are on the same side. Okay, same thing here. So, that's, so just be um, just be aware of the the stereochemistry. Okay, here's the mechanism. It's it, again, it's this. You get this concerted, you know, this attacking here, this coming down here to to make this and release this. But it's this really cool sort of um, cyclic structure. Okay, right, so with that, so MCPBA, we're going to make an epoxide, right, so with that, so we're going to add, make the epoxide there, okay, and and so, oop, ah, I had the the the, uh, the answer here, oops, printed out the wrong one, right, so with that, so, right, so, so there's hydrogens on this side, right, so that means these guys are going to be on, on one side, okay, so let's say they're, they're on wedges, okay, so CH3. So that means these hydrogens are going to be on the opposite, right? So these are going to be, again, on going the other way. Okay. So, so that's this. Okay. So with that, so another thing, right? So we talked about last time that we could do, um, we can do these oxymercurations where you put the O, you add water across the double bond, but you put this. You're going to put the OH with the mercury on the more substituted side, right? So, so this side is um, secondary, right? So that side is um, primary, right? So with that, and so you're going to add it 
HOH like this across here. So it's going to go on the higher numbered side. Okay, so you want higher number. Um, how about that? So, okay. So the, the nice thing about again about oxymercuration is you don't have this rearrangement. So under um, because you don't have you don't form a carbocation intermediate, right? So if you do this reaction, that carbocation can shift over here um, to give you this product. But under oxymercuration conditions, you always end up you end up just adding the water across the double bond, no rearrangement. Here's the mechanism, and you actually end up going through. Um, you have the mercury coming down and then coming up. Um, you actually end up making this this three membered ring here, um, stuff like that. So when the water comes in, displaces it, um, the water is going to come on um, the higher numbered side, right? So with that, and then the hydride comes in and displaces this. So you, so you end up adding um, HOH across. Okay. So with that, so again, well, the other thing is um, sodium borohydride, right? So with that, you can add the, the borohydride step ends up adding both um, on the same side and opposite side of the um, of the OH, so like that. So, so you get both sin and um, an anti-addition, so like that. So, but the important part is, right, and actually this is incorrect. We realized this in class the other day. The OH should be here, right, so like that, So because it's the higher number side now, so like that, so, okay, so like that, so. Okay. Now again, with ketones, right? So with that, or with alkynes, right? So with that, so again, we're going to add to the to the higher numbered side, right? Here, secondary primary, right? We're going to add HOH, right? Like that. Okay. So we're going to add this, right? And then this is going to tautomerize to here. The oxygen doesn't move where the oxygen is. That's where the C double bond O is going to be. So it's just like what we were doing in chapter eleven. Um, so like that. So. So like that. So now for internal alkynes, right? So you're going to get a mixture, okay? Right? So it's so it's secondary versus secondary, right? So there's no preference between the two, okay? Um, so like that. So you're going to get a, a mixture, mixture between them. So okay. Now if you want to put the OH on the lower numbered side, okay? You have to switch. You have to use the complementary. Um, Chemistry, so with that, so this is called hydroboration. So this was developed by H. C. Brown at, at Purdue, um, so with that, and so here you use bor um, borane or a similar type of compound, um, but the big thing is it's boron, um, so with that. So it adds, it still adds H O H across here, but now it's going to go on the the higher on the excuse me on the lower number side. So now this is lower number side, okay. So now we're going to add the O H here and the H on this side. Right, so we're going to get the anti Markovnikov addition. So it's a, it's a nice complementary reaction. To, uh, right, so with that, so now the other thing is um, the way this works, and we'll talk about the mechanism in a sec second. The H and OH actually end up adding on the same side. Okay, so the other one, when we were adding oxymercuration, we get anti addition. Well, actually, we get both. Here you get um, some of that, the H and the OH are going to be on the same side. Okay, so with that, but again, you're going to add the OH here and the H here, right? Because this is secondary, this is tertiary, right? So like that. So the reason why this works is the fact that it's all dealing with sterics, right? The boron, right, is going to go on the less substituted side, just for simple sterics. The hydro, the hydride can go on the the more substituted side, just uh, for sterics. So when this forms, right, the boron is going to be here, and since it adds on the same side. After this gets oxidized by the peroxide, um, that is a is a um, when that oxidizes, it's going to end up on the same side of the molecule. Um, so like that. Okay. Now with hydroboration, again, if you're going to if you're doing an internal, right? So with that, so it's secondary versus secondary, you're going to get a mixture of the two. You know, that's what's going to happen. The power of this is the fact that if you have a terminal alkyne, because again, you're going to have Right, secondary versus primary. Okay, you're going to go on the less on the lower numbered side. So you're going to put the oxygen here, and when it tautomerizes, you make the aldehyde. Okay, so remember that there's there's a hydrogen here, um, stuff like that. So this is a really nice way of making aldehydes because it, it can be difficult to do because they're so reactive. Okay. And stuff like that. And so for here, right? So like that. So ah, we have the mercury, right? Mercury acetate, right? So, so here's a double one, right? So so here, this is tertiary. This is secondary, right? So we're going to add it, um, OHH, like that. And so 
this compound is going to look like. Right, so we're going to OH, right? So in, you don't have to put the H, but just to show you. Okay. Now for here, you have hydroboration, right? So with that, so again, you're going to have uh, this is secondary versus primary. Okay. So we're going to add um, HOH across here. Okay. So, so we're going to get this, this intermediate. Right, so um, H O H, but that's going to rearrange and to put the double bond there. Right, so with that, and so you end up with with that. Okay, so there is a hydrogen here, right? Because there's a hydrogen there to make the aldehyde. So there we go. Okay, good luck.